Hi everybody, Jeff Simon here for Social Flight. Well, on our T51D Mustang build, I have been spending tons of time just doing wiring and more wiring inside the fuselage so that we can get all the electrical going, everything from the autopilot to trim systems and the primary electric. And that kind of wiring just doesn't make for good videos. So I'm taking a break now and I'm gonna do a little bit more aluminum work because sheet metal work definitely helps. And we're gonna talk about something now that uh, a lot of air craft has to uh, have to deal with and that's when you have something that's coming through the skin for like a trim surface rudder etc so if we take a look right here at our uh, rudder here on the aircraft you can see that the trim on it has to come out the uh, actual trim motor and control is inside the rudder and then it comes out through this uh, uh, fairing and then goes and controls the trim on the rudder right there but the question is how do you find out where to cut the hole in order to have a rod or a cable come through a surface like this and today i'm going to talk to you about how i make that happen because we have the same problem down here on the side of our tail here this is our elevator that you have right here below the elevator of course we've got to be able to get out with our cables and control the rudder so if i reach in here we have our rudder cable right here the problem of course is we don't have a hole for it to come out through what's known here as the uh, e-skin at the very back of our tail. And it's one of the last steps we have to do before we can actually do final mounting here on this skin. So the question is, how do we go and get the hole here, Have to make sure the hole's in the right place, and then after we can use one of these, this is a little uh, fairing preformed from Titan Aircraft, and just like we did here on the rudder, uh, this actually came this way from Titan, but uh, just as that was done, we have to do the same thing here. And uh, I will say, as we do this, it's gonna be interesting to find that, but we're gonna use a trick. And I'm gonna show you my favorite thing, and uh, you've seen this from Jake and Ben as well working on the plane paper. Being able to take heavy gauge paper and use it to model something before you go and cut aluminum is a trick to making that happen. So let's go to the other side here and take a look at it and uh, get building on our T-51D Mustang. Okay, so I'm over here on the left side of the aircraft now. This side, I'm going to raise up the elevator. This side doesn't have the skin on. I took it off and I hooked up the actual cable for the rudder. You can kind of just barely see that right here in the picture back here, but here's where it kind of diagonally traverses where the skin is going to be. So the question here then is how do we figure out where to do it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, sit here and I'm going to use this uh, paper that I've got. I'm going to put the paper up here and I'm going to come up with locator uh, uh, kind of things that give me a place to locate where I know where I kind of know where my bounds are going to be. And so I've sized this up, so I'm putting it right along the vertical portion of the tail here. And then I hold that in place, I take a marker, and I go here, let's get the marker out, and I mark off the area diagonally that I think is a safe zone for this cable to transition out. So I go and I put that in here, and that's going to actually mark that part of it. The next thing that I do is I actually take this off, if it'll let me. There we go. And I slide, I slide it down, and I find where the actual locating points are going to be that I can use, and those are going to be rivet holes. So I'm putting it in the same location as far as its, its orientation, kind of forward and aft, which is along, along this structural member. And then I'm going to go in and actually mark a couple points that are rivet holes. And now that I've done that portion of it, I can actually look back, shift it just a little bit, and see by looking in here, what's the vertical portion of where that cable is? Where's that located vertically? Um, and then I can actually go back, use a ruler, triangulate both of these, and then cut a hole that I can then test. 
All right, time for me to check my work here. So I'm going to go and take the paper um, and I'm going to pull through the cable and then I'm going to use the, uh, um, the actual Clicos through the paper in place and see whether I uh, did an okay job in locating the pass-through. All right, so that actually looks pretty good. Uh, the only thing I would do is expand it a little bit more uh, on the bottom so uh, the cable doesn't rub and give myself just a little bit more breathing room. Um, but the forward section and the aft part of this cutout really look good. And now what I can do is I can put in a few more of those locating spots. I can just go and punch through the paper to where the rivets are. And once I do that, I can take and transfer this onto the actual sheet metal, cut the hole in the same location, come on here and see if it works. Okay, now I am just going to trace that hole. onto the mounted metal here. I've used my locating points. I'm over here on the other side of the aircraft. So I've used my locating points, tested that out. And now I can remove the template. And I am left with the location that the hole needs to go for the cable pass through. Now comes the nervous moment. Drill through here and see if it actually got put in the right location. All right, so we are pretty close. Just a little bit of an adjustment here. We've got the back edge pretty much where we need it. Just need to adjust the front edge. So now that we've got that through, I can go and kind of mark what I need to do on the front edge and then make the final trim and we'll be all set to go. All right, so there you have it. We now have the cable pass through here, at least on the right side. I'll duplicate everything on the left side. A couple interesting things. Um, I did realize much later into the process that because the angle is so shallow here of the cable exiting, that the exit slot does have to be a lot longer than I had originally anticipated. So I did have to make quite a few modifications to lengthen that. In general, it's in uh, the right location, which is great. I didn't have to change anything about its vertical orientation. And so the next thing I'm gonna have to do down the road after I clean this up and get it all set is I'm gonna have to put this fairing on or come up with a modification for it. All right, so I'm back here at the tail of the aircraft again. I've removed the horizontal stabilizer in the elevator just so that I can get in here to finish things up when it comes to the exit for our rudder cables. Now, we did run into a bit of a snag here. This happens anytime that you're you know, building an airplane. And what I, what I wanted to do is along the way to include lots of maintenance access in the safest way possible, of course. And so we're able to put in these two uh, access points. This one's covered over here. This is actually where the elevator goes. And this is this main access one for back here. And this is important to actually get in and inspect and also work on the linkage for the elevators. Um, and so you really need as much access as you can. Now, it's not a highly stressed area because there is a metal, a structure of the frame, the steel frame is going all the way around this. However, it became apparent when uh, I'm in here and have finished this slot and where it actually all goes for this exit cable that you can't actually use these covers in place. We don't have room for that. And uh, I looked at cutting it down. I looked at using it uh, in different ways. At the end of the day, the best solution seemed to be to actually just leave the completed slot here, but seal it off. And the way to seal that off is to use 
baffling material. So I took a piece of baffling material that you can see right here, and it has a slot that's been cut in it, as well as I punched out holes for where it's gonna get sandwiched with the rivets that go in there. Another interesting point is that you don't want this to tear, and so uh, I actually cut a slot that has punched holes at each end, kind of like relief holes. Therefore, it's the same thing you would do if you were doing stop drilling a crack in aluminum. Um, and this just fits inside and then gets sandwiched with uh, rivets on the bottom. And then the inspection cover plate has a lip that I made for it that actually grabs it at the top so we don't even have to have a whole bunch of extra rivets in place. I've done a lot of testing of it and it just works perfectly. As you move this through, it's sealed. Uh, I uh, put some pressure on it. Air loads are not gonna work on it. And the nice thing about that is not only is it streamlined, but in terms of like insect uh, infiltration or other things that can cause trouble, when you actually uh, just use a cover like this and then have a large hole inside, that's a perfect invitation to insects. They have no problem getting in through this big gap, going in there, building whatever nest they wanna build. In this area, you really only have just as much space for the slot, so at least we're reducing that a little bit as well. So simplify, simplify, simplify. We've got something I think is gonna work really, really well here, and that's it for the rudder cable exit on our Titan T51D Mustang. Until next time, be sure to check out socialflight.com and the free apps for Apple and Android devices of Social Flight. We've got tens of thousands of aviation events and destinations, so many great things. Our Fly to Win Challenge, where you can win great prizes. And of course, every Tuesday evening, be sure to check out Social Flight Live and all our fantastic guests. Until next time, I'm Jeff Simon for Social Flight, and I wish you all blue skies.